It was at the North-South Korean border. An American military official approached the line, accompanied by one or two South Korean officials. He held a megaphone. Stopping just before the line, he aimed the megaphone over the border and explained that South Korea had found the body of a dead North Korean soldier and wanted information on how to turn it over to North Korean officials. As he spoke, North Korean soldiers looked at him through binoculars and scattered about like flies until they finally went inside their building and closed the door. It's difficult to take it all in. Normally, when you try to talk to someone, they listen, receive your message, and pass the message on. But the North Korean officials seemed to assume that South Korea had some other intentions, as if the South wasn't saying what the South was saying. That's not to mention that the South had to communicate with a megaphone because no one in the North would receive a simple message. What was even more startling was how much I kept thinking about communication between different Christian sects and denominations. In the church and in America as a whole, communication has a striking similarity. People are suspicious of each other, and they don't receive each other's ideas. When a Baptist speaks to a Pentecostal, it is as if each of their friends circle the other with binoculars before silently walking away and closing the door. The only way to talk about even the most basic of cordial concerns is through a megaphone, because there is no reception. By refusing to listen to each other, Americans have adopted dangerous values to a point where North Korean missiles may not be necessary to destroy the country. But shouldn't Christians at least act better? Not only should Christians be courteous across their borders, there shouldn't be borders in the church. It is as if American society follows the example of old-time denominational divided churchianity. Unfortunately, the church keeps the borders they shouldn't, while governments don't keep the borders they should. Ironically, removing church borders and building government borders are equally politically incorrect. Dr. Ben Carson has some words about political correctness. Fix the PC culture in our country, which only listens to one narrative, and if it doesn't fit their philosophy, then they try to ascribe some motive to it. Whenever you are asked a certain question, it has to be answered in a certain way, and if you don't answer it that way, then let's attack. Let's not try to actually understand what a person is saying, let's just attack, 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 and hopefully everybody else will look at that and they will realize they're never supposed to say something like that again. That's what the PC culture is. Blame for the nation's division rightly rests at the doorstep of the church. It's impossible to rule out that the North-South Korean conflict wasn't influenced by the church's own division and non-communication. Non-communication is very dangerous. The church doesn't seem to understand how important the issue of communication has always been. Christians don't even understand what they say to each other, let alone the great dangers that now await them, merely from their refusal to communicate. So the Christian and American political scripts are the same. When someone doesn't respond according to the expected narrative, the programmed minions assume that he has some hidden agenda, and it is as if they can't hear plain English. And that's the letter. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.